So, Colm, mm -hmm. where do you think Ireland is at at the moment? Um, I think we are where we are. <laughs> we are where we are. Um, I think we're at a wonderful uh, stage of bloodletting and uh, realisation. And I think the opportunity for change is great, but needs to be seized upon. And um, so I see it as being something that's inspiring rather than depressing. Personally, I found the whole Celtic tiger and that kind of abandonment of decency and the breaking down of community and the embracing of the individual consumer um, really ugly and so you know what goes up must come down and I think we're we've just hit the ground over the past few years and I think it's a case of yeah let's start doing things differently you know so I think that's the opportunity uh, I'm not one for kind of wallowing or I don't think I think we should get out of that cycle um, the politics is kind of very disappointing I think through and through um, it seems kind of all the talk of kind of getting over the punch and duty factor I think it's just that's where we're at again but the recent debate about abortion and all that has kind of brought us um, and the avoidance of like stuff like the Anglo tapes and the whole kind of there's a huge amount going on I think we, we live in a time where the secrets are, fine, are, are being found to be impossible to be kept anymore so the truth is coming to light left, right and centre, whether that be kind of Anglo tapes or WikiLeaks or um, pillars crashing around us with religion and Catholicism and bankers and, you know. But it's a case of like these people had power because we invested power in them. So it's a case of, I think, a case of realizing her own power and I think that's where my optimism would be founded but I think we need to invest in our youth you know and it's a bit of a cliche I think and then if you're investing in your youth it has to be about education and as a person who's been uh, self-employed for about 25 years um, and who's lived in a constant state of recession uh, or, you know, where you don't necessarily know whether, where next week's rent is going to come from. Um, I think you need to, we do live in that time where it's not a, that frightening a place and you just, it's about kind of, I um, remember a friend telling me about, or Bill Hicks, a friend telling me about Bill Hicks's phrase, which was, um, you know, you have two choices in the world and one is, it's basically everything is founded on these two choices and it's love or our fear and I think that's completely true and you can either trust in your fellow human being that they're essentially good and that's you know there are people who share your hopes and dreams and that you can build a good world with are there people who you need to build big fences to keep your guard yourself from in case they come and steal your stuff and I think that's, we've been embracing that fear model for, that's the, the model the, the, the Western world has kind of been embracing for the past 20 or 30 years. And um, I think we need to get back to the love model, which is really sustainability, tolerance, um, embracing of diversity, um, celebrating of individual talent think uh, come back to education I think that our education model needs to be you know adjusted to take in people's abilities that they're gonna celebrate their ability and um, nurture their the uniqueness of every child and you know celebrate it rather than punish it like you know and I think we're we've come a huge way like in primary school system, I think it's a huge step forward than where we would have been 10 years ago even as regards
it's kind of like um, special needs kids being educated with mainstream children, typical children. Um, I think that's huge and I think it's a, a wonderful step towards um, fostering compassion and humanity in young children and um, it's wonderful but I think you can moving on from there I think it's really important to diversify and realise that kids have different talents and different abilities and be able to get them creative and, and celebrate their creativity and basically you know, all this kind of buzz talk about entrepreneurs and all. Entrepreneurs are basically people who follow their dreams, you know. So what do you what you want to do is inspire kids to have dreams firstly and then secondly, most importantly, to make them believe and that their dreams are possible. And I think that's what it's about.